Hi, this is Steve, K8BZ. This is the third video in uh, my series on using an electronic logging program called M3FJP's Amateur Contact Log. In the first two videos, we uh, showed how to enable a rig interface. We also showed how to enable a call sign lookup service uh, where it will fill in the information uh, for US and Canadian calls uh, when you enter them in the call sign field. In this video, we're going to talk about DX spotting. Uh, DX spotting, if your uh, PC is online, can look up DX spots from the internet and they can be displayed on your log. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and show how to do that. Uh, that will be under the settings menu. And we're going to go down to DX spotting and then we're going to go over to configure. So in order to turn it on, it's very simple. Just go up here to enable DX spotting and it will log into the DX spotting uh, Telnet host that you have selected over in this area. And uh, there will be a few of them in the list and al almost all of them are active all the time. Just pick one and enable DX spotting and if nothing happens, go pick another one. So we're gonna, uh, that's just the basics. There's, uh, uh, we won't put any filtering in. Matter of fact, let me remove any filters. No filter, okay. We'll talk about filtering in a minute, but we'll just take a look at what happens when you enable DX spotting. In order to take full advantage of DX spotting, you need to have your rig interface operating. And uh, that's why we went over that first uh, before we got into uh, DX spotting. Uh, what this will do, if you have no filtering, it's going to show you all of the uh, stations that have been spotted as long as you have this running and uh, they'll come up and scroll in this list. Now there's, there's a scroll bar over here on the right hand column where the, you can scroll up and down through the list. It's, the first column is the call sign of the station spotted, the frequency they were spotted on. It's going to list the country. The country is just going to be determined by the call sign prefix. So if the call sign prefix is incorrect uh, or if they for example, if this uh, station in uh, Greenland, if they put the slash OX after the call sign, it would show Denmark uh, because of the OZ call. Uh, let me clear that again. Uh, OZ1LXJ will show Denmark, as you can see over here. So uh, that's not a foolproof thing, but it's, it's pretty good. Then it's going to show the band in, in the third column. The mode, if the person that spotted the DX station includes the mode in the comments in the spot, it's going to show the mode. In this case, it was JT65. If they don't, it's just going to assume what the mode is based on the frequency. If it's in the single sideband portion of the band, it's probably going to say single sideband. If it's in the CW portion of the band, it's probably going to say CW. Now let's go back to the settings menu and down to uh, DX spots again. And let's take a look at some of these. You see here in the comments, they put in FT8, FT8, FT4. So if they put it in comments, it's going to show, the, the mode will show up uh, in the DX spots on the log screen. If they don't, it would probably show up as CW because it's going to be down in the CW end of the band, which is also the digital portion of the band. A couple other things. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and you're going to see here, stat, uh, let's look at the status column. The status column, and I'll expand it a little bit, the status column is going to show the status of that call sign or that uh, country, which, which is Greenland. It's going to show whether you have it confirmed on that band. So Greenland is on 160 meters. I have it already confirmed on 160 meters, so the status is going to show confirmed. If we go down further and it says new, uh, here's uh, Mali on 160 meters. I do not have that confirmed. So it's going to uh, highlight that as a new entity on that band. Uh, so that's a very handy thing to have. When you first start doing electronic logging, everything that pops up in the spot list is going to say new <laughs> uh, until you uh, confirm them and indicate in your log that they're confirmed. But once you have 
really started working hard on DXCC and you are well on your way to DXCC, uh, you're going to find that it's very useful for this to show you spots for stations that, uh, uh, that you need to get confirmed. And as an added benefit, over on the far right in this column, uh, let me shrink some of these up a little bit and give myself a little more room. This is going to say if there's an L in this online column, it's going to tell you if this call sign has uploaded to Logbook of the World. So that's even better. If we go after this station, 2306, well, that was almost an hour ago, so I won't try it now. But uh, I do need that station on 160 meters, and they do use Logbook of the World, so that even improves your odds of getting a confirmation without having to uh, either uh, pay for an OQRS online QSL card to be mailed to you and pay online or send uh, a QSL with return cash for return postage to get a QSL card back. So it's kind of handy to do that. Now I just clicked on that uh, TZ4AM and we see I've, I've worked him on 15, 17 and twice on 40 and over here in this column up in the log it's showing that I have received confirmation via a QSL card on one, two, three of those contacts, and I've received confirmation via Logbook of the World, that's what the L stands for, on all of those contacts. So that would be good if I could get him on 160. So uh, that will show you how DX spots work. Uh, you can also enable filtering, and one of the things I filter, I'm going to go back to the uh, DX spotting. Now these are spots that are that are entered in the DX spotting system by stations from all over the world. They're not all entered by stations in the United States, uh, as you can see here. These in this column, that's that's who logged the station. This is the DX station here, over on in the in the first column over here. And you can see that they're spotted by people all over the place. It really doesn't help me much to get spots on 10 meters from uh, in this period in the sunspot cycle from stations in Australia or in southern Africa, uh, stations on six meters that are spotted by people in Asia. <laughs> okay, so normally what I do is I want to display spots. Up here are some of the filters. I want to display spots for all of these canton, uh, continents, including North America. But I'm going to click this More Filter button here. And I'm going to ask it to only show me spots that are entered by stations in North America, stations in my continent. So that way, if someone else in North America is hearing them, then there's a, probably a better chance that I'm going to hear them than if it was spotted by somebody in South Africa, China, India, Indonesia, Australia. Uh, that means if the propagation is good to another station in North America, there's a fair chance that I might have propagation to that station also. Now, let's just assume that you are a, you're not a CW operator. You really don't need to see CW spots, so we can click this and it'll block any CW spots. If you're not a digital operator, you can block digital spots. You can even block phone spots if you don't uh, work phone, if you only work CW or digital. But I want to see them all. What I want to see is any spot for any country that I don't have confirmed on that band or don't have them confirmed at all. Uh, and I want to display digital modes also. If you just have your tech license, an easy way to filter them is just say, just show me stations that are spotted in the technician subbands or in the general subbands or in the advanced subbands. If they're spotted elsewhere, uh, it's not going to show up. I'll caution you though, if you have a general or advanced license, probably if you're looking for DX, probably not a good idea to check those. The station may be spotted transmitting in the extra class band but working split and listening for responses up in the general portion of the band. So don't forget about uh, these D expeditions where they almost always work split and they work very close if not down into the extra portion of the CW band at times. Uh, and in the phone bands also. 
Uh, then uh, the next category here is where you can click bands that you want to skip. I skip 60 meters, uh, don't operate 60 meters much, and you, you, it can't be used for awards anyway. So I skip spots from 60 meters. I skip spots on two meters and up and black spots for DX entities, which I already have confirmed on both band and mode, and then that's CW and phone. So if I've already got them confirmed on both, then I'm not gonna, not gonna want them spotted. But if I need a, either the band or the mode, then it's gonna go ahead and show the spots. So I have it filtered in a way that is very helpful to me. And the good thing about this is when you have the rig interface enabled and working as we described in the first video. Let's uh, let's say the station in Greenland, we need that station and we're, we wanna try to work them. When I click on it, it's got automatically gonna put my rig on that band and frequency. And uh, uh, it will also put it on the mode, uh, the mode that that frequency, uh, the sub band that that frequency is in. In other words, this is, all of 160 meet, <clears throat> excuse me, 160 meters is phone in CW, but uh, traditionally down that low in the band, that's uh, usually CW only. Let's go to, let's look at this uh, other one here that I need. Oh, there's one in Gibraltar. There's actually been a few sunspots here lately. Uh, okay, so click on Gibraltar. That's one that I need. I have confirmed him on several bands, but not 160 meters. It sounds like the thunderstorm here is near over, so I'm gonna plug the antennas in and uh, see if I can hear this station. It was spotted at 2251, and it's now 23 hours, spotted over an hour ago, but maybe he's still hanging around. But anyway, when you click on that spot, it's gonna fill in the call sign. It's going to switch the rig to 160 meters. It's gonna switch it to the frequency because I have the rig interface enabled. And then it's also going to show you all of the times you've already worked that station up in the uh, uh, log list on the top of the form. So there you are. You have call sign, uh, uh, call sign lookup and uh, the uh, DX spotting feature enabled. So this uh, electronic log is starting to really take shape. There are several other things here that uh, this log is very helpful for, and we'll get into those in the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to give me an email at k8bz at arrl.net. Thanks for watching.